is going on my YouTube family? Oh my gosh, look, I have a setup today that doesn't suck. I'm super excited. I am also excited for today. Hi, Gail. Where are you? Um, I'm in my studio. <laughs> I am really excited because today I want to go through face a face drawing step by step because my new book is out and the um called how to draw and find your style which you guys know but i want to it's come kind of to my attention that i think a lot of times like i maybe assume people maybe know so much or too much or no more so I want to like spend a couple live Tuesdays, like going way, way back to the basics. Hi, everybody. Tanya and Gail. Hi, Jonah. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so I'm super excited you're here. The feedback on the book has been super positive, but my most favorite thing about what I've been hearing is actually seeing that people are like sitting down, opening up the pages and like doing the exercises. That's like my most favorite thing in the whole world. Like my biggest fear is that I just made 260 pages and people are just like reading it before bed and then they fall asleep and they don't do the exercise. But like people are really like showing me their work and in Facebook pages on, on Facebook and my Facebook group. And if you haven't joined my group, you gotta come and join it. Just um, go into Facebook, search groups, awesome art school and you'll find me. Um, but like just seeing people's eyes and noses and ears, and it makes me super excited. But then I noticed that there's still some little spots where people are not clear about. Um, and one of them is actually face shape. And it's I, there is a page to face shape in here, but it's, I go over it so quickly. Um, and I noticed some people are still having trouble with guidelines. Oh, I'm so glad you like the book, Kimmy. That's the best. So Lynn, it, it will be in New Zealand and I know people are getting it in Australia, but it, it takes about six weeks from publication in the US for it to reach like all the Amazons all around the world, like India and Australia, New Zealand. So um, by Christmas time, it will be worldwide Amazon available. Right now it's, you can get it, but you have to use a different uh, Amazon to get it. So just wait and the price will be regular for you. Um, I never get tired of teaching people how to draw faces though. Like I never get tired of it. So I hope I would like to, oh, you got your stimulo, yes. Um, I would like to do it today with you like super slow and step-by-step -step and pause at the guidelines because I know there's, I'm still seeing confusion about guidelines. And I'm also gonna pause um, because I think the first thing we need to think about is also how to draw a face shape. We haven't really talked about that yet. So, and I don't think I even, I have a single video that talks about face shape. So let's talk about that um, today. First, I'm gonna open to the face shape page, which is page 51. Um, and this is what you'll see on page 51. So we do, we're gonna start. So this is what I'm actually gonna do for you right now. And then here you can see the rough guidelines and I give you four sort of ideas, but I think it might be super helpful since I've never done this in an actual video before to talk about how to draw a face step-by-step, -step, but then also how to create, like what does it actually look like to make a different face um, shape? Um, so yeah, so let's, go i'm ready and i do have to say too this also applies to people um in my fun fact drawing club someone's like can we draw like plus size you know women and my answer to that is like of course you can you can draw absolutely any any kind of woman that you like um and i think just the difference is that when you're doing face shapes for someone who is like juicy <laughs> and i mean that in the best way um that they just your face shape will change it will simply just become rounder so like there of course you can do whatever you like um you know it's all good so i and another thing i actually don't talk about very much which i'm going to talk about more and this is why your feedback you guys in the comment section of all the videos is super important so um hi michael i'm glad you're here hi jessica 
So if you, oh, my camera's like always so dirty. I'm sorry. Um, I don't talk about paper very much. So I, I'm going to talk about it right now. I'm going to be working on charcoal paper today. But when you're using charcoal, you can literally actually use whatever you want. What's up, Rosalyn? Oh, love back at you, girlfriend. Um, my last drawing, charcoal drawing, I did on watercolor paper. Like it's fine. It works fine. It's this girl over here. You can, um, it actually doesn't matter so much. I like watercolor paper for charcoal because it has like texture. Charcoal paper actually has like kind of, it reminds me of like corduroy pants. You know, it has like lines. So that's unique to charcoal and I'm going to be super honest and I'll actually love it, but that's what's in front of me today. So let's talk about face shape, shall we? I'm going to go super slow and I'm using charcoal, which means I'm going to be really dirty very soon. But no matter like what face, oh, I'm so glad, Jessica, you just made my day. I'm glad you're loving the tutorials. But before I do any shape, I like just, I'm just gonna, can you see that? Okay, my lighting is too, might be too much. Let me bring this down and I'm gonna turn this off. Oh, that's so much better. Boop. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's awesome art school live. All right, I'm having fun already. Okay, so by the way, drawing ovals is hard if you're not used to it, but have you guys heard of muscle memory? It is so, hi, Krista. So it's, muscle memory is legit. It is how basketball players can make like a three point basket like over and over and over and over again. It's not like they just came out of the womb knowing how to do that, they practice. And like face shapes is exactly the same. It's exactly the same thing. So our muscle memory is, is created by doing the same repeated thing over and over and over, just like a basketball player. So oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying the fun fab face class. We're having a little fun fab face class right now. So when I, but before I could get to the point where I could just whoop, whip out an oval, like what did I do? Here's some hot tips for you. One is you got to lock your wrist up, like lock it up tight. Cause otherwise um, you're going to try, you try to like control things going this way. Like especially if you're up close in your paper. So it does help to actually work really um, large. So someone, Oh, I want to read your comment. How do I read your comment? It says, does it really matter if you draw a circle or an oval first? What's the difference? Just adding a chin to a circle. If you want to draw a circle, you totally can. I just think it's like, then you're going to have to do something. You can do this and then add a chin. That's fine. I find it harder to draw a circle though, than to draw an oval, especially if you don't have muscle memory built in yet. I find it's easier to make an oval because because you know what happens is when you do a circle, you're so intent on getting it perfect. Um, it, it is distracting and it's it's just harder. <laughs> it's harder, but you absolutely can do it. And this is art and there's no rules. So if you prefer to draw a circle, girlfriend, knock yourself out. And you can do a circle and then just drop down a chin. I also find it's a little bit harder to do a circle yeah, and that's fine. If you want to rock a circle, you go, girl. What also I find is hard is that now you have more lines going through here and now, and you still have to put your guidelines in. So it's a little bit confusing because you'll have guidelines and circle lines. Do you know what I'm saying? So for me, it clears the way if I start with an oval because I it eliminates this center part a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? Because your guidelines get a little, um, they get a little involved as you put them in and do not skip your guidelines. So yeah, but, but don't worry, we'll do whatever works for you. I'm just one, one way. Um, so, but it does make a really nice chin line to do that also. But also the reason that I like doing the oval too, so lock your wrist and I'm doing it really lightly, like super light. And when I just first started doing this, like my first Fun Fat Faces book, I would make like 50, like 50 ovals and do 50 if that's what it takes you. But what's cool is that like, you'll start to see like uh, the actual shape taking place. And also what I like about an oval rather than a circle is, so when I do my circle and then I just, oops, phone call, decline. 
um, when I do the circle <clears throat> and the chin method, it's harder because you already have such a natural, perfect face shape. If you want to experiment with face shapes, it's actually a little bit harder because you're kind of just locked yourself in a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you're done. But this, because you haven't, there's nothing penetrating in the sides. If you want to experiment with some face shapes, oh, you can a little bit more easily, I think. Okay, so and this is uh, what I should have done. I didn't have time. Let's print out a bunch of, um, hold on, references. Let's see if I have some here. Um, 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 um. Usually, oh, wait, I have a magazine. That'll work. <clears throat> All right, so here we have, hi, Heidi. Hi, Tonya. I've not forgotten about you, both girlfriend. All right, so Lady Gaga, huge fan. All right, so if you look at her, she has like a long chin line. We're talking face shapes. She has a chin that is flat on the bottom. So this would be flat, and then it has like a wider jaw to here, and then it's like literally turns up. And there are a lot of different face shapes. And it is really fun to try to draw different face shapes. Oh, girlfriend, you'll be 50 tomorrow, you're still learning. Honey, I have students that are like starting at 82 years old. So you are, you're a spring chicken, let me just tell you. Okay, and then the neck, you can come out of here. Now, realistic neck is actually way wide. Do you see how there's the turn of her, that's the turn? Her a realistic neck is actually like way thick. <laughs> but um, like as far as illustratively that's concerned, I don't find a big thick neck to be like visually attractive when I'm doing illustrative girls. And that's just a style. That's just my own personal preference. But if it was being realistic, you really do need to pay attention to that. All right, so let's, we're doing Lady Gaga's face. <laughs> okay, now this is a really good question. I didn't realize this was tripping someone up in my Facebook group, which was putting the guidelines in for the eyes or eye line was, was kept coming out rather high because on pages like this in the book, see I have the hair drawn in. So she was having her guidelines coming, like if I had the hair drawn in like this, she was using the top of the hair to the chin as the center point. So that raises your center point way too high. It's like up here. So when you're doing the guidelines for the eyes, it's always from the top of the bald head to the chin. And then you find that's your halfway point. So it's much lower. It's like really truly is halfway. So that's huge. And I see there's certain things because I'm just so used to it. I don't um, draw attention to those little minutia details like that. But yeah, you don't take the hair and continue to consideration. Vanessa says the guidelines mess me up all the time and end up with uneven eyes and a nose. So maybe that's because you don't have a horizontal, that hor the vertical, I'm sorry, the vertical line down the center is just as important as the horizontal lines going back and forth because the, the horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical line is what keeps you centered. Are you putting your, are you dropping down your vertical line also? Because if you have not, that will definitely keep you on track. There was a period when I was dropping this because I wasn't lazy, I was just feeling really confident. <laughs> um, yes, the guidelines are straight. The guidelines are straight, Jessica. They're only curved if the face is curved. The line still goes in the middle across the oval, 100%. Yep, and that's the eye line. Whoop, and then this one is what keeps you on track. So that's huge, and this is halfway. And then to find the nose, the nose line, so this is your eye line. The nose line is, here's your eye line, and then here's your chin again, Lady Gaga. 
<laughs> yeah, don't. Yep, that's right, Vanessa. Your lines could be off if you're. So you need to don't do the hair until all your features are placed. So no hair at all. So your eye, and because doing it, if you are centering it from the top of the hair to the chin, your eyes will always be too high. So balds, balds, balds. How do you measure your eyes so they're equal in size? Sure, I will try, Tonya. And a lot of this too is just practice. It's just practice. So here's your eye and then there's your chin. So you divide that in half and that's your nose line. Now, coincidentally, that is lining up with that first circle. So that could be a good guiding point for you too if you're doing the circle technique. And then the chin. But it depends on how big your circle is and how big your swoopy is as well. Will you please show you how to measure your eyes so they're equal in size? Okay, you can draw stick men. Awesome, Johnny Pay. And then you take the nose and the mouth and you divide that in half and that's the mouth line. So for the eyes, well, and there's your all your grid lines that you need to do. So I'm gonna start fresh over here so it's not quite so garbled up. So with the eyes, and I'll zoom in here. Um, I really do just start with three in a row. Now this is, that's not a realistic proportion. You know, what's so crazy is that a realistic portion is actually Eyes are like teeny, weeny, weeny, tiny. So eyes, and you can see this in my book too, are really like five across. Look how much distance there is between this eye and in the center. Eyes are tiny. They're so, so tiny. Um, so we're just gonna talk proportions today. Where's that page I'm looking for? Oh, right here. So if you can see, so here's how it would look on five across and here's how it looks like, and the ovals actually weirdly end up right at the corner of the ear there. It's so strange. It's so weird. And this sentence, when I say it's fascinating, I think that are so many billions of people on this earth that look so different. And yet their proportions are so very the same. It, this is why I'm obsessed with drawing faces because you just tweak one little tiny thing and like your entire face is transformed. It's so awesome. Um, so I, when I'm doing my made up faces for my imagination or my fun fab faces, I like to do three across because the eyes obviously like have so much meaning and depth and character and personality for your character that I always make them a little bit bigger on purpose. And of course, in the whimsical way, you can do whatever you want. Um, so before I start like fine tuning anything, Tonya, to answer your question on how I measure them to make them equal, I really don't, but I, what I do I, is I eyeball and I will make circles over and over again until I have them about the same size. So your first focus before you ever draw an eyeball or anything is making sure your these little squished eye lines, uh, guidelines for the eyes are one all the same size. That's like super important. So a big mistake that I see a lot is that, ah, oh, that's awesome, Shelly. I'm so glad that you're drawing five faces off the same lesson and they all look completely different. I know it's so fun and it's really addicting. So a lot of times what I'll see is I'll have people, they'll either have different, like they'll have different shaped ovals or they will be really overlapped. They'll be overlapping, in which case that defeats the purpose of using them as actual guidelines. So you want to make sure your ovals that you're you're making your guidelines for the eyes are all the same size and they're not overlapping each other. Because if they're overlapping each other, then they're too close because you need an eye width for them to be an eye width apart. And so the biggest thing, the biggest hint for me is if people are not using guidelines, if it's their eyes, even they could be well shaped and everything, but they're like super close together. Obviously not that super close together. Hi, Debbie, but they're really close together. So you wanna make sure you can fit an entire eye between them. Even if there's no room on either side 
for ears and head or whatever you want. That's the one in the middle is everything for proportion. So that's super cool. That's super important. So you have your eyelids, your eyes, and your nose, and then your mouth. And I think someone said that their nose is wonky, right? And their eyes aren't lining up correctly. It's I bet you it's because you're um this. The vertical is not being dropped down the middle because then you can see it is this side the same as this you can tell if things are even or not and that's why so here's let's see there was lady gaga's face <laughs> we can do some really we can get really crazy with shading and whatnot um and here's one with like a very pointy chin and if you want to do a fuller body human, you just do a fuller, ah, you just do a fuller, sorry, I'm trying, my fingers are like dirty. You can do a fuller, you can do a rounder shaped head if that's fine. I just think it's cute that people ask me permission, like, is it okay if I draw someone who is, you know, like a plus size? I'm like, of course you can. You can draw whatever you want. You don't need my permission. And drawing everyone is the same principles. It's just combining things like guidelines so that your facial features are all in the right place with drawing which what you see, which is, you know, you're combining like working from, from inspiration to uh, working from a photo reference. But you can change your, your face shape. You can have a wider face. And if you want to differentiate an adult with like a heavier set face with a child, just be careful because the way that you draw children's faces is by drawing more of a circle. A rounder face will create your character to look younger. And babies have almost like perfect circle faces and like no chins. And their gui gui guidelines drop down a little bit. So their full face is almost is concentrated toward the bottom of the circle. So just be careful if you're drawing a fuller size person. And um, hold on, Tanya, what do you say? I see where the eye, oh, I see where the eye placement is in conjunction with the sides of the face. Okay. I'm not sure if you're just commenting or if you're asking me a question, but if you have another question, let me know. Oh God, please. Oh, whoops. Almost canceled. Okay. So anyway, so if you have a circle that could also be a child, so just be careful, you still use your guidelines. And if you are doing a fuller face adult, you want to make sure, again, this is where it's, I feel like it's better to have an oval as you're starting rather than a circle because a, an adult will have a longer face. So if you start with an oval, you can always cut in at the sides to give it some more definition, but you know the age will be at least um, appropriate and you can change it from there. Um, 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 what else did I want to do today? Okay. Okay, cool. All right, that's all I'm going to do today because I want to save like a little bit for each week because I'm coming on every Tuesday to do these live streams. And um, yeah, do you have any other questions before I hop off? Because I got to go get kids from school. Does anyone have questions for me? And you know what I'll do too? For those who are re-watching this, I will, um, I will link to a playlist right here. That's to our 100 Fun Fab Faces Challenge because that is 22. Um, <laughs> do you come on with that? I has 22 face drawing exercises in it for you already pre-recorded. So, um, yes, I'm coming on every Tuesday. I'm trying to come on every Tuesday at two. And I always post on Fridays anyways at 10 a.m., 9 or 10 Eastern Standard Time. I always post videos. So, um, what's the best pencil to use for light lines? That's a good question, Gail. So you can either use, you have two choices. You can either use um, a regular pencil and just don't push down very hard. Just do. You're welcome, Leslie. Just don't, you can always just sketch lightly. That's one way to make a light line. Or use a pencil that has an H in it. Hold on. All right. So here are my pencil bins. I have a bin of B's and I have a bin of H's. 
So my H's are my hard leads and those make light lines because the lead in them, graphite is very, very hard. And then these are sorted by B's because those are bold and they're very soft graphite. And of course, Gail, if you look in your book, this all goes back to the value scale, which is in the very, very front of the book, the value scale. This is like everything, okay? So you're, it's right here in the book that I'm getting charcoal all over, nice. So your, your high numbered H's are gonna be your lightest lines. So you can use any H. And then if you wanna make a darker line, you grab the B's. And that's why I um, keep my pencils in either in either the h in either the h bin or uh or the b bin so yeah so i hope that question uh, that answers that for you or i love these black wing pencils because and actually i drew all of the most of those in the, with a black wing pencil because these are soft lead they almost give you the whole entire value scale spectrum um in one pencil they're kind of magical like that and they have this really cool tipped eraser which is um, you can buy refills for, they pop out. So you can just get new ones if you still have pencil left. So these are really, really fun. So I hope that answers your questions. All right, I will see you guys on Friday for um, your regularly scheduled video. And I'm gonna be posting why mixed media art is a party. Oh, and I also made a really cool PDF to help you guys with my hamburger mixed medium mixed media system. So I will probably have a link in Friday's video to that. So that helps organize all of your layers of supplies so that you're putting your acrylics down in the right way and your collage, your adhesive, and what goes where and why and how. I put it all in a single PDF. So I'm gonna have that for you guys on Friday. So please come back. Oh, getting phone calls. So please come back and visit Friday and I will have more information for you then. All right, you guys have an awesome week. I got to go pick up my kids from school. Bye.